Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a, another impromptu, unscripted version of Prime Cuts. Will Cooper here. And I'm in a different setting tonight. I'm in um, a room that I've now dubbed the parlor. Um, it's a different area that uh, I'm kind of testing out here for a potential studio setup. But um, this will not be a smoking area, unfortunately. And this is uh, by my choice. Uh, this is a uh, very, very special area of um, Cigar Coop headquarters. And um, this is just, uh, this. Um, if you want to go old school, you come into the parlor here. Uh, we have some early 20th century uh, furniture in this room. And it's a uh, potential setup for maybe something that we do a broadcast where we don't need cigars. So I'm kind of testing out this studio setup for logistics uh and we're going to see what's going on there. So um this is yeah, so this is the parlor here. Um very very uh very very special place here. Um few things, so I guess uh to talk about a few things tonight. Um I'm actually first of all um drinking the uh Rumor free teaser free coffee, uh, which you can get at www.cigar coop forward slash coffee, and you can order yours. Uh, I'm drinking the dark roast, brewed some up a little while ago, drinking it uh, black here. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is a really good coffee uh, with cream. I'll tell you straight out, this coffee really, really blends well with the cream. Um, but if you haven't gotten your coffee, uh, the folks at Lane Coffee, I think uh, Logan did an exceptional job on this particular blend. Um, I was looking for a, a dark roast, uh, low acidity, and uh, he came up with a combination of Mexican and Sumatra beans for this coffee, which just he knocked. I actually really believe he knocked it out of the park. And um, the rumor-free, teaser-free blend is, uh, again, available for sale. Um, we've already uh, gotten some really good feedback on this coffee, as well as the Coop's Kona blend, which uh, is the our lighter roast which is a combination of Kona and Nicaraguan coffees. Um, so I uh, see that we have a few folks here tonight. Um, John, you, you, you were a big winner last week. Uh, the coins are coming out. And the other winner was Bob, who I actually am not informed yet. <laughs> but Bob, uh, Bob was our winner from San Diego. I'll be contacting him, and he can pick a, a prize of choice here. So a lot, a lot happening here as far as this goes. But um, I'll tell you what, I really, really, uh, the dark roast was something that was very, very um, personal to me in terms of a blend. And I think, uh, like I said, the guys at Lane Coffee knocked it out of the park here and, um, you know, just just really, really set set forward uh, just a good blend for, for me to enjoy as well as all of you. Uh, Big, big week this week, actually, um, on Cigar Coop in that we're actually winding down IPCPR 2017 coverage. So uh, where the goal was I'm going to have most of this done before Labor Day. I think we're going to hit the goal this week, and uh, we're, we're winding down. There's still more articles that are coming out, um, so stay tuned for that. And we're heading into a very, very big month on the primetime shows over the next few weeks. So... Uh, you know, it's hard to believe we're we're heading into the fifth month of uh, prime time, and I, I could not be more grateful for our audience as far as you know, just the, just the wonderful feedback we've gotten on the prime time show and prime time special edition. And if you didn't see special edition last night, um, it actually just came up on Podbean, and it should be coming up on Cigar Coop. Probably by tomorrow, we we did have it was a longer show. There was a little more post production that needed to be done on that, and we're starting to increase the post production process as far as that goes. So uh, you know, stay tuned. You'll see a notification on that. Uh, Bear and I actually went on our move. We did a moving on show where we talked about people in the industry who have moved on to different roles, and then we actually went and uh, we actually talked a little more tobacco last night. In the second half of the show, because we we've been doing a lot of industry talk, a lot of people talk, but you know, but we hadn't done a lot of tobacco talk. And Bear and I kind of got into it last night in, in terms of uh, talking um, over a cigar. And the cigar we smoked was Todos Los Dias by Steve Saka, Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. I I think it was you know you could make an argument it was the hottest sh 
cigar at, at this year's trade show. And there's, there's other ones that, uh, that's not discounting the other ones. It's not saying it was, you know, the only one, but I thought it was a really, really good cigar. And, uh, we each smoked it. We kind of, uh, geeked out on it, so to speak. And then what we have done is Bear and I have placed one of an identical cigar we smoked. Uh, he smoked, he smoked the short Churchill size. I smoked the, uh, double wide Bellicoso. And we placed an additional one of those cigars in our personal humidors. And we're actually going to come back and um, revisit those at the end of February. So we're kind of going to do a little bit of a uh, primetime lab experiment. And we'll see how that is going to um, work out. So it's kind of something a little different we're doing. But we want to get a little more tobacco talk. Um, if you are going to be tuning into any of the primetime shows... The big, uh, big, big um, month ahead. So we have Charlie from Half Wheel scheduled for tomorrow on episode 19. Next week, Tuesday, September 5th, we are doing another special edition. It will be special edition number 11. It will be the Casada show. It will be an all Casada show. We're going to have Terrence Riley of Casada Cigars, who I have not interviewed it's going to be the first time he's on where I have the whole team together. So we're going to have Aaron and Bear co-hosting with me. And I'm actually not going to be in the Sereno Cigar Company studios, but we'll still be powering it by the Sereno Cigar Company studio. But I'm going to be down at the cigar shop in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And uh, I'm going to be at the Casa Magna Lounge, which was the country's first Casa Magna Lounge. And we will be broadcasting special edition number 11. We'll have Terrence on there. I'm promising you guys... It's not a show you're going to want to miss. Um, I'm just kind of saying you, you need to kind of definitely tune into. If there's a prime time that you should be tuned into uh, live, and I think uh, you'll be real, real pleased. It's going to be a great show. Next Thursday, uh, we have slated Tom Wazuka, Asylum Cigars. He's actually one of my uh, one of the most fun interviews I've done, and uh, we'll probably have to try to put the jinx on Tom Wazuka in terms of Detroit sports, like I did a couple of years ago when I we talked Detroit sports, and I think every one of his teams just folded on him. So uh, Tom from Asylum Cigars, a really, really fun guest. Um, going ahead September 14th, we have none other, Master Blender Willie Herrera, a guy I've known, but I haven't interviewed. So looking forward to Willie uh, um, making his primetime debut. And then um, we are going to jump ahead to the 19th of September. And uh, Bear and I have decided we're going to do the HK show. Uh, we're going to do a review of the Hans Christian Hosgard era at Davidoff, which, in my opinion, has been, which is going to be historically remembered. I believe when Cigar History is written someday, uh, when Hans Christian's uh, um, stewardship at Davidoff is going to be long, long remembered. There's an incredible track record. Bear and I will break it down primetime style. I don't think you're going to want to miss that show. Uh, we're doing a lot of prep work for that. That's why we didn't kind of go and do it last night because, um, you know, we really do try to prep for these shows. Um, so we, we take a lot of, we take the prep work very seriously on that. Um, moving ahead to September 21st, uh, Aaron and I on, we'll have the Tommy Bahama guys uh, from Island Lifestyle. They'll be on. We'll have Ryan on. We'll be talking Tommy Bahama accessories. Great accessories you want to definitely check out. And then October 5th, Enrique Cejas. He is the son of the legendary Jose Cejas. He runs Matilde Cigars now. We're going to have uh, Enrique Enrique on primetime, making his primetime debut. So you're not going to want to miss that. And then jumping ahead to October 26th, we have uh, Dirty Fabian of Drew Estate. And, uh, you know, he's been working on the uh, non-traditional cigars, the acids, some of the flavored stuff. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I got to meet Fabian at IPCPR. I really hadn't talked much with Fabian. The guy's awesome, and you need to check out his podcast on Drew Estate. Uh, guy's, guy's a real talent, and I'm literally looking forward to that. And then going ahead into November, November 16th, we have Rom from El Artista Cigars. They make the big poppy cigars. So big, big primetime lineup coming up right now. Um, I saw P Peter, thanks for the crank words on the dark roast. I, I happen to really enjoy it myself, so very much appreciated. And uh, got to be careful not to spill anything on this furniture here. As much as I, it may be more dangerous to drink the coffee in here than smoke a cigar, but um, 
you know, again, uh, for folks who are tuning in, I'm in the parlor tonight. The Cigar Coop Parlor. Uh, it's an area of um, Cigar Coop headquarters with, that I very, very much enjoy. I probably don't make as much use of this area as possible. It's, a, it's actually an area that, that uh, like I said, there's just a uh, long history with just in this room. Uh, the, the couch I'm sitting on here is actually uh, early uh, 20th century here. So it was my great-grandparents. So um, I'm greatly, greatly... Uh, like I said, I just love this particular room here. So uh, uh, I see my good uh, friend, uh, Reality Fred, has joined the room. Be sure to check out the Reality Fred podcast. Guy's, guy's doing some great stuff. Um, he talks a lot of stuff. He's a cigar guy, but he talks a lot of other great topics as well. Um, so kind of hit all the stuff on Cigar Coop and hit the coffee. What am I going to talk about tonight? Uh, you know, it's kind of a little tough to do a show what's going on in texas right now um bear and i talked about a little last night and you know obviously you know it's a horrible situation down there and you know obviously we hope everyone's safe and you know you know hopefully you know it's just it's unreal so i i'm at a loss of words with that but i'm sure like the whole country we uh you know our thoughts are with them right now but um you know there was an event that happened on uh, this Saturday, and it was, and we're going to talk a little more about the event on prime time tomorrow, which was the uh, Floyd Mayweather Conor McGregor, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm not a fight. I guess you call it a fight. It wasn't, but um, we'll talk more about that on prime time. Break down that a little more, and I think Charlie will have some thoughts as far as that goes. But um, you know, there's this interesting thing that happened. You know. With this particular, and for folks who don't know, I, I kind of am a real big boxing fan. I go back a long time with boxing, and I got into boxing in, in uh, the late seventies. Uh, my uncle Vinny, my uncle Lance, uh, my grandfather, boxing guys, um, started watching the fights. Uh, particularly, I kind of came up at the end of the Muhammad Ali era. So with Muhammad Ali, I do remember when Leon Spinks beat Muhammad Ali and then when Ali won the title back. So I do have that much, but really I think I came up with Larry Holmes and Sugar Ray Leonard. And then the guy who became my hero was Tommy Hearns, the hitman who always, always let me down. But uh, but a huge fan. So I became a huge, huge boxing fan. And, um, you know, there's today, you know, going into boxing, there, you know, you're either, there's, there's not a lot of guys who are, I think the the boxing purists have kind of MMA has definitely had an impact on that. I don't think World Wrestling Federation so much, but um, I think more MMA and I you know there's there's a rivalry that's happened with the boxing and the MMA community. I think it's it's a you know and guys who if you look if you're on the boxing side of the fence you're going to be uh, singing the praises about boxing. And uh, which, as John points out, is the sweet science. And if you're an MMA guy, you're gonna you're gonna like MMA. I don't like MMA. Uh, it's not my thing. I'm an old school guy. I'm in an old school room. I'm drinking my coffee, old school style, black. But um, no. Um, but I'm a boxing guy, and I've always been a boxing guy. Um, you know, I heard this theory. I heard this thing. Well, well, you know, and obviously Floyd May well, Floyd May wasn't one to fight. Okay, and I heard this theory. Well, if Floyd Mayweather was fighting in the uh, octagon with with Conor McGregor, he would have lost. Yeah, he would have lost. And just like I said, Conor McGregor was going to lose to Floyd Mayweather in a boxing ring. This, this is there's a two different sports here. Um, I'll talk more about this again. I think tomorrow. But I'm not big on the crossover. I'm not big on mixing apples and oranges. I will say there is a track record though of. Fighters coming into boxing who were not boxers and doing well, and it's the Thai kickboxes. And again, being a boxing guy in the '80s, there were a bunch of Thai boxers that came, excuse me, Thai kickboxers that came into boxing, and they won some world titles. I mean, Sat Chitalata was the flyweight champion of the world two times. If you never saw Sat fight, he was a, a fantastic flyweight, which. Uh, I love the flyweights. I love the I love love watching those fights. And he dominated the flyweight division for a while. Came over from Thai Thai boxing, Muay Thai. The thing is that um, the, when the Thai boxers came over, they they immersed themselves in boxing. They they learned the craft. They learned the sweet science. They didn't go into a, uh, a, a an exhibition 
like Conor McGregor did. These guys went into a fight, and um, they trained. And that's why these guys became world champions. And, and then I think had Conor McGregor taken another route, which it wasn't going to happen because of Floyd Mayweather's age and because there was too much money on the table. So it wasn't going to happen. But I did wonder, and I think he got smoked, by the way. He got he got destroyed. And, it, you, you know. We could, and that's a debatable thing, I realize. But, but had he really kind of gone through and taken some tune-up fights, kind of gone through the ranks, I just, I just kind of wonder. It made me wonder what, um, what could have happened there. Had you know, so it's an interesting thing. Hey, Bob. By the way, you're you're the winner of uh, last week's contest, so I'll be in touch with you. I see Bob Langmaid's in there. Um, but anyway, uh, just so I looked at that, and you know, but but here's the thing: boxing's not without their problems. Boxing's got its problems. There, there, there is no question that that there's a there's problems with boxing. They're not connecting with the younger fans. Um, it's it's the good fights, you know, are not accessible. So we have some issues. But but, you know, don't give me the um. Well, it was better than Mayweather and Pacquiao. That that's that's not an argument. It's not an argument because, you know, every Super Bowl is not going to be great. You're just not going to get it. So you're not going to get that. You know, that's a bad argument, okay? Because for, um, you know, you look at guys, some of the fights we've had over the last few years, there's some epic fights that we've had. You know, just go back to the Pacquiao-Marquez uh, fights. I mean, so they those are fantastic. So don't I don't want to hear that, that that was – and by the way, if you're going to compare, that was not – the fight we saw this weekend was – was not even a top fifty boxing match of all time. Maybe not top one hundred. So that wasn't that wasn't what we did. But boxing's not without its problems. Among uh, it's, it's it's sport with problems. I think I think so. I'm gonna kind of go through a few things. I think that we could do to fix boxing. So I think we can actually fix boxing. Um, but so what I'm gonna propose here is probably gonna be subject to the debate. Um, it probably will be said that it's not practical. Um, but I do think boxing is quite, quite, uh, fixable. I think so. so. The thing is this, I think that me being an old school guy, I, I, I think a championship means something. I think there's something about a championship, whatever the competition is. I want to see champion versus challenger. And I think in boxing, We've lost that. That it's been less about a champion versus challenger fight and more about a fight. And what has happened is there's been, you know, because there are many um, sanctioning bodies and the sanctioning bodies just continue to grow, anyone can get a championship fight. Anyone can get be a champion. Jerry Cooney never won a championship, a, a world championship. Jerry Co Howard Davis Jr., one of the great Olympic boxers, never won a world championship. Today, these guys would have been champions, probably maybe two or three different champions. Because what's happened is we have all these sanctioning bodies that take place. It's not like MMA where it's a sanctioning and promotional body. You have this other notion. So that's that's a problem and it's, that's kind of escalated. And I think when I when I was kind of, kind of going back to the old school way of, of boxing, um. I go back to, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s is when boxing started to split. And World Boxing Council, World Boxing Association were the two sanctioning bodies. So, and boxing's fragmented. So you had this notion of two champions. I don't think it was a bad thing when we had two champions. Because eventually, you it was kind of like having an American League champion and a National League champion. I know not the same, but the idea is eventually you'd have a, um, a unification where you'd have a undisputed champion. It was pretty easy, cut and dry. Two, two champions, um, two champions, and then eventually, you know, go back to '81, uh, Leonard and Hearns, that unification fight. So I mean, and those guys were one and one a. I mean, that was just as far as a match goes. It was, it was me. You know, it was an incredible matchup. Even they, they had a second match in '89, which was a very good match, but not not that '81, because these two titles, and it was for all the marbles. And I just felt um, it was, 
it was good. So when it became three bodies, when it became four bodies, it became very difficult to have a concept where you build up this AL, American League champion, this National League champion, and then world champion. So I really, really think – if we, if somehow we can consolidate down to two sanctioning bodies, and this is, I think that would be a, a huge win for boxing. I don't, you know, like I said, when I kind of preface this, I don't think it's ever going to happen, okay? But I do believe if we got back down to two sanctioning bodies, and maybe if these, these organizations got together, um, we'd see more championship fights. Now, the other thing is to keep in mind that what happened is, the explosion of TV, I believe, had a big, big part in um, these sanctioning bodies coming up because they were trying to get more fights on TV. But then what eventually happened is all the fights went to pay-per-view. So, um, you know, I, I don't like it. But I will say one other thing. I love the fact that this McGregor-Mayweather fight was in the theaters. Again, old school, the closed circuit. Going to the closed circuit fights in the 80s, that's what you did before pay-per-view. You went to a theater and you'd watch this fight, you'd buy a ticket, you'd watch it. It was like almost like being at the fight. It was really it was really cool. And in some ways you had a better better view of it than going to the actual fight. So it was really cool. And so I, I kinda would like to maybe see the theater concept come back as well with that. Um because I think it would I think it would make it a little more of an event. And then you um and of course if we could have a smoke field theater, that would be unbelievable. You know, so you know again I think that's something championship fights. We need more champ. The big fights need to be championship fights, not um, paper championship fights or anything like that. So, you know, as far as that goes, um, I, I believe that's my first step to fix boxing. The second thing, let's go back to the 15 round championship fight. The 12 round, I don't know if it will ever happen, all right? But, but you know, the t when you had the um, the fights. Rounds 13 to rounds 15. Those were called the championship rounds. There were so many, so many great fights decided in those 13 to 15 rounds. I mean, you can, I mean, again, Leonard Hearns w went into the 13th round. Um, possibly the greatest fight I saw in the 80s, Bazooka Lamon, Bobby Chacon, uh, 1982. Uh, it was for the WBC Junior Lightweight Championship. Maybe the greatest fight I ever saw. Bobby Chacon uh, basically knocked down Bazooka Lamone in the last minute of the 15th round. And that put him over the top on all three scorecards. So when you look at that, it was like, that was, again, you have championship types of, um, you have championship types of rounds. And you got to get back into that, that 15 round thing. Enough of this 12 round, this 12 round stuff is, Unfortunately, I think it's some of the um, the commissions that are driving this, unfortunately. So I think this is when you get regulation playing into it. But we need to have um, the championship rounds rounds back in there. So I think I think it is um, a very, very key thing because, again, I think it will, it will really make these fights much more interesting, more endurance, just better, better quality of fight and, um, you know, that's that's kind of what what I would look at that as as the second thing, um, you know I've heard that the third thing I'll say is it kind of goes back to the TV model, and I, there's been some attempts to get boxing back on on free TV. I don't know if you necessarily need to do that, but it needs to be it does need to be a little more accessible I think than HBO is what I'll just say. Um, because HBO is still a pay channel, but you know, I don't think there's a notion where boxing has to be on free TV to succeed anymore. But I do think it needs to be, um, you know, more accessible. Um, fourth thing is the, this has never changed, but it is the um, the start time of the fights in Vegas are just way too late. Um, and at least now they do these things on Saturday nights, is what I'll say. So you don't have to go to work the next day. We, I mean, when the big fights in the 80s were on Monday nights, um, you know, Larry Holmes and Ali was a Monday night fight. I remember that well because I had to go to school the next day. Uh, Leonard Hearns was a Monday night fight. Hagler Hearns, a Monday night fight. Um, but I think Saturday, I think personally Friday would be the better day to do it. 
But I understand what Vegas is doing. They want to get people into Vegas on Saturday. So, you know, again, I, but I do think they could, they could pull this time up a little more than 1130, 12 o'clock on the East Coast. I, I think there's a way to do that where, um, you don't, you don't have to do that. Um, the next thing, back to the championship thing. The champions got to fight more than two times a year. Got to fight more than two times a year. Um, it's, you know, when you went back again to these guys in the 80s, it was three, four, or five defenses a year. Three, four, or five def- championship defenses a year. Mandatory. I think it was in some cases, you, I think some of the sanctioned buys for a while had it there. Three, four, five. Um, I believe you got to go back to, to that. Again, you got to get the, 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 the fight twice a year is, again, you can, that's how you solve the problem of filling up the more of the TV networks. All right, and that's how you'll compensate for my suggestion of reducing the amount of titles. You have more title fights with uh, less less sanctioned belts. So if you kind of do that, and it puts these guys uh, on the onus, it um, it also makes a little more of the unpredictability factor. I think with boxing, in that when you have a guy who um, you know, the one thing I always used to love with boxing was when the you had that last minute substitute. Um, come in there, and he'd, he'd give you, uh, you know, Evander Holyfield, I remember had a, um, I forget who he was fighting against, but um, he fought, the, the, there was a, he had a title fight scheduled, this was the early 90s, he was a heavyweight champion, and he, his opponent, I guess, bailed out, or something happened, there was an injury, I don't remember who the opponent was, but I do remember who the substitute guy was, it was this guy named Burt Cooper, uh, smoking Burt Cooper, man. This guy was a this guy was a a classic Rocky Balboa kind of uh, fighter, and and I had watched actually Burt Cooper fight a few times in the late eighties. wasn't the greatest fighter, wasn't the greatest technical scientific fighter by any means, but um, Burt Cooper, man, could, he can get you with that one punch, and. You know, Burt Randolph Sugar, the late editor of Ring Magazine, loved him. Loved, loved Burt Cooper. Big cigar guy, Burt Cooper, okay? I'll never forget, I heard this interview with, with Burt, Burt Sugar talking about Burt Cooper. And Burt Sugar says, Evander better watch out in that fight. He goes, because, you know, if you watch Burt Cooper, you knew he was the guy. You could just... And Burt Cooper had his moments in that fight. He did. He gave early on. He gave Evander um, a real fight. He had nothing to be ashamed of, and he kind of came out and he lost the fight, and he should have lost the fight. But you know, he gave you, you know, he gave you everything he had in that fight. But again, that was because you had to make more defenses of your titles, and you, you know, when it made these situations come about when if someone couldn't make the fight, you had to get that substitute in there. There's a little more of an unpredictability era of boxing, so to speak. Um, I think there's more education that needs to go on with boxing. Particularly, I think we are a... I don't think today with, with the younger fans... You know, when, when, when I was watching boxing growing up, we had Howard Cosell, uh, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy... Uh, Marv Albert and the fight idiot, I mean the fight doctor, the fight idiot. Um, but, but these guys, one thing that was really, really good about this is they didn't just broadcast the fight. They educated a, a generation like myself on boxing. Um, I, I don't think HBO has done a good job with that. I think they technically put on an incredible, and it's Showtime, I think technically they put on an incredible production. But they don't educate a generation on boxing. And I'm going to, you know, again, I just don't see, I think that's, you know, and you, I'm not just talking about educating in terms of what it means to score a punch or something like but I think that's hurt boxing a lot. And I think we need to get back to the basics of, of educating our, the younger boxing fans and kind of doing that more. And again, when you're having it on HBO, when you're having the fights on at 1130 at night, ain't going to do it. I mean, it's just not not gonna it's not gonna work. So that's why I kind of favor this better education. You know, again, I don't know if we have the you know, another guy, great educating guy, Alex Wallow. 
uh, ABC Sports, Al Bernstein. You know, these guys, uh, these guys would just, would just hit. And, and again, they taught you about, by, you understood about it. They gave you a historical perspective on it. So I really believe that we need to get back to educating the younger generation on this because I think MMA is doing that right now. You know, I don't enjoy it, but I can say this. They're marketing correctly. They, you know, again, they, there, there's a, it's, a, it's become a monthly event. And boxing hasn't done a good job with that. But boxing hasn't changed. You know, you could still get a great fight. You know, boxing's not dead. Boxing's not dead. Um, it's it's kind of got to get out of its ways right now. Um, so it, it's, I just can't, um, you know, so I, I believe education, extremely, extremely important part of it. I think we need to pay a little more attention to, to the boxing history. So, you know, those are, I think, are the problems that boxing has. I think, can they be all solved? I doubt it. I don't know if that will ever happen in my lifetime, but by, you know, but but I do believe that we have a um, a really good thing as far as as boxing goes, and I don't I don't want to see another circus with the MMA again. I don't want to see it unless unless an MMA guy is going to come over and take the time to learn boxing and kind of come up through the ranks, become a contender. I don't want to see it. And the same thing, I don't want to see a boxing guy go over there and get pummeled. Like, uh, because he will get pummeled over there. Floyd Mayweather got pummeled over there, you know? You know, so, you know, I don't want to see that. I want to see, come over, if you're going to come over into the boxing, into the squared circle, or if you're going to go over to the octagon circle, go in and take the time to learn your craft. And um, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it happens as far as that goes. So, Will Cooper, I am in the parlor um over here uh at the cigar coop headquarters again reminding folks i'm um, drinking the rumor free teaser free dark roast the only problem with it is i've been talking so much the coffee gets a little cold by the way speaking of cold i'm i haven't tried these coffees cold brewed um i'm i i, I have not gotten into the whole cold brewed phrase so if anyone's tried these coffees cold brewed, let me know. Let me know and um, see what happens um, as far as that goes. Oh, yeah, we will be giving away a bag of coffee tonight, by the way. So um, we'll be giving away. You can pick whichever one you want. This will be uh, one bag of coffee, and I'll have a question you know, towards the end of this uh, thing here. So this this is, again, uh, I've been doing another uh, Prime Cuts. And in Prime Cuts, what I'm doing is actually tonight I'm just testing out another studio setup here. To see how this works, and what you can't see here is the uh, I have a beautiful like table that's far back, but the problem is um, it's I'm not even going to try to move this thing. It weighs a ton, and I don't want to move the couch setup. So I actually have the I have a crate sitting here, but <laughs> you can't see under my feet, and uh, that's why I have the coffee in my my laptop, so to speak. There, as far as um, that that goes, but um, anyway, just again. Um, Thanks to everybody uh, for tuning into this unscripted ramble session on this. Um, I'm going to get ready to close this down right now. And really, very, very simple. Um, if you send an email to coop at cigar-coop.com and give me one of my suggestions for fixing boxing, um, you will win... Uh, I will pick one winner at random, and we'll be getting all the prizes out this week. It was a little bit of a hectic week over um, at Cigar Coop this week. We have a uh, bunch of we have two shows and a bunch of projects going on um, that will probably hit, you know hit light in the next uh, very very soon. So there's been a lot lot going on as far as that goes. But um, again, to win, you can win the bag of Coop's Corner Blend and. Um, to win a bag of rumor free teaser free um first time winners only tonight we're gonna do all you gotta do is send an email to coop at cigar hyphen coop dot com very simply if you you give me one of my suggestions to fix the sport of boxing all you gotta do is suggestion to fix the sport of boxing uh you can win one of these uh wonderful coffees by the way if you win a coffee and you 
don't have a bean grinder, let me know. Uh, we can get the coffee. The Lane Coffee guys will grind the coffee to your specifications. And every batch is individually roasted for um, your enjoyment. And by the way, while we have Cigar Coop Coffee on there, um, be sure to check out some of the other great coffees that Lane Coffee has to uh, to go. So um, you know, that has out there. So you can definitely check that out. And by the way, if you're not a coffee drinker and you missed primetime episode 18 with Robert Holt, which is up there, Aaron Loomis and I are talking tea. We talk tea, which is pretty cool as well. So um, you need to check that one out, so to speak. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for this impromptu Prime Cuts. I don't know if there will be a Prime Cuts next week. Uh, it's going to be a very, very, a little bit of a hectic week. But we'll be doing some more of these setups. We have, uh, there will be trying out some more things. So, um, again, uh, have a great night, everybody.